Hello everyone, welcome to the Crystally Recapped channel. In Spain, a little boy with a smart look fixes a tractor. On the radio, they report about unusual solar activity, causing several satellites to malfunction. The senior mechanic asks the smart boy what he thinks about these natural phenomena. The kid, obviously biased, claims that aliens are to blame. But the man agrees with him, stating that yes, they're responsible for everything and things get serious. Alba rides a scooter on a beautiful road, then stops and records a video journal. She mentions being near a cave where her father, a climate scientist, works. Inside the cave, there is indeed a scientist. Alba interviews her father, but he's unoriginal, only talking about the need to preserve nature, leaving Alba unimpressed. Didac spends his free time drawing. Alba stops by, and Didac happily shows they're well acquainted. When not fixing tractors or drawing, Didac dreams of becoming a famous footballer. A few idiots on quad bikes approach and insult Didac. The women drive them away and they leave, promising to beat Didac later. Alba returns home where her father is getting ready for a trip to Barcelona, promising to return only the next evening. The dog barks strangely, but they don't pay much attention to him. Didac is eventually caught and taken somewhere. Alba sees it but can't stop the boys, and they throw him into the river. Didac starts drowning, but Alba rushes after him and pulls him out. At that moment, the atmosphere explodes with a red flash. Alba pulls Didac to the shore and administers first aid. The sky turns terrifyingly red, strange winds, lightning. The whole city is on fire, many people who were on the streets have died. Alba and Didac retreat into the cave, where they find some supplies and warm clothing. In the cave, they try to understand what happened, but it's definitely not aliens. In the morning, the snow stops falling and the weather outside improves slightly. They both head to Alba's home, but it's also damaged. There's no communication, no electricity, but the solar charger works. They go to the city, but everything is destroyed. Alba suggests going to Barcelona, but when she tries to start the scooter, it doesn't work. Didac tries to push it, but the scooter falls with Alba, injuring her. At night, Didac and Alba go to sleep in Alba's house, but Didac hears something. Though Alba claims it's just the wind, as a precaution, he puts something under the door to block it. The next days they spend at home, Alba still recording her video journal. She feels worse, and Didac takes care of her. Alba realizes they need antibiotics. Didac panics a bit and decides to go for them despite it being nighttime. He's scared, but he rides his bicycle into the darkness. In the morning, he gives Alba the shot and explores the empty city on his own. He finds a workshop and a tractor. Several days pass and Alba regains consciousness. She feels better, and her wound is almost healed. Now they live, eating vegetables from the garden, hoping that someone will come to them sooner or later. Alba thinks they should go to Barcelona, but she's afraid. Didac still doesn't understand much about women, so he panics when he sees a red spot on Alba's bed. He thinks she's been kidnapped and killed, but she explains to Didac what's happening to women. He wants to touch Alba, but she pushes him away. Didac finds a weapon in the city and now learns to use it, although he's not very good at it. Three months pass and no one comes. Didac and Alba had somehow adapted to their life. Several years passed, and Didac had grown significantly. Alba became somewhat interested in him. While mixing flour together, Didac kisses her, then walks away, not knowing what to say. A storm destroys the crops, despite all efforts to preserve them. Alba is very upset, but in the morning, Didac brings a repaired tractor, and now she's very happy. They both gather their belongings and head to Barcelona. During their overnight stay, Didac says he wouldn't mind if they stayed alone together forever. In Barcelona, it's just as chaotic. Alba cries, realizing that her father died along with everyone else. They ride the tractor honking, but no one comes out. However, they discover a large SOS sign and go to investigate. They find a tent city, but no one responds to their shouts. Suddenly, a minor earthquake occurs and they hear a child crying somewhere briefly. They head there, but it's only a doll. However, behind the tent, they hear a sharp sound 
and both go to see what's happening. Unfortunately, they only find an old body swaying in the wind. They reach the ruins of the legendary football stadium, and Didac runs with a ball on the field while Alba pretends to be a fan. They have fun, but then they find themselves in an uncomfortable situation again. However, in the evening, Alba finally makes a choice and their relationship enters a new level. Then a satisfied Alba ponders what will happen if they were alone in the world. They decide to start exploring the world anew. They decide to leave the city and live by the sea to have a proper place for gardening and happiness. Now Didac works and Alba films him. Alba announces she's pregnant and they're both happy. But now Alba will have to study a lot of books and prepare for childbirth. The time for childbirth has come and after a sleepless night, they have a baby boy. Once they see a yacht at sea. Alba is excited but Didac is disappointed and says there's no one on it. He claims they don't need anyone. However, Alba tries to get attention and suddenly notices a person washed up on the shore, alive. When the man comes to his senses, he tells them that the wind suddenly changed direction, causing the sail to hit him on the head. He fell off the yacht and only regained consciousness on the shore. The man is happy, thinking he was alone in the world. He says he has a cabin on an island and invites the couple to visit him. He helps with the gardens talking about yachts and Alba gets along well with him. However, Didac is not very happy about the new man's arrival. Didac sees the man peeking at Alba while she feeds the baby. He tries to argue with the man, but he says he brought honey. However, Didac hints that his ship is ready and he should leave. The man promises to visit them and says he'll arrange a farewell party and invites them to the yacht. On the yacht, the man sets up a movie projector and they watch a movie using the sail as a screen. Alba decides to stay overnight on the yacht and persuades Didac to stay. In the morning, Didac wakes up and sees that there is no earth around them. He shouts that they've been swept away into the sea and the man suddenly punches Didac in the face. From this, Didac falls off the yacht into the sea. Alba, seeing him drowning, rushes to rescue him despite the man trying to stop her. She manages to save Didac, but she sees the yacht drifting away from them. Didac is furious and Alba is in shock as their baby is left on the yacht. Now Didac and Alba study maps, trying to understand which island the man lives on. Alba suddenly remembers how the man said his honey was collected from very rare flowers and she learns that this flower grows on several islands, the nearest of which is Menorca. They head there. Alba sees a bee and rejoices. Then they find the man's yacht and sail to it. It's anchored, but no one is on it. The couple disembarks and goes to the man's house where they hear a baby crying. Through a hole in the fence, they see the man and Alba demands Didac to shoot him, but Didac misses the chance. The man goes to the bees. While he's away, Alba explores his house. She finds the baby but he's in a cage locked with a padlock. Meanwhile, Didac aims at the man who is busy with his tasks. Alba sends Didac to break the lock while she takes the gun and starts watching the man. But she gets distracted by the baby's cries and the man attacks her, taking the gun. At gunpoint, Didac is forced to surrender. The man ties them both up, believing that they could pose a threat. However, the man says that Didac would never accept him into the family and it would eventually lead to conflict. He says he couldn't bear to live alone again, like he did for the past seven years. Alba pleads with him to untie her, promising that they will find a way to improve their relationship. The man believes her and unties her, mainly because the baby needs milk. However, he still keeps Alba at gunpoint. They go to the baby and the man begins to tell how he sometimes intentionally listens to his cries because there is a lot of life in it. Alba realizes that the man has gone slightly mad. He demands that Alba feed the baby and return to the cage because the treasure must be protected. While Alba feeds the baby, the man approaches Didac to talk to him. During this time, Alba takes the baby and escapes from the man's house and he sees it. The man realizes he can't catch the girl, but Didac remains in his hands and the man begins to torture him to lure Alba back with his screams. Alba hearing the screams turns around and Didac loses consciousness from pain. 
The girl runs away again and there's nothing left for the man but to search for her. The baby cries, so it's easy for the man to follow her trail, but Alba deceives the pursuer by recording the baby's cries on her smartphone and leaving it elsewhere. Alba returns to the house and they try to free Didak. The man also comes to the house figuring out her plan. He threatens Alba, forcing her to put down the baby. Then he shoots her in the leg for disobedience. Suddenly, Didak breaks free with the help of a small knife that Alba managed to leave him and attacks the man. While they fight, Alba picks up the gun and aims at the man. He believes she's incapable of shooting and approaches her. When he gets very close, Alba finally shoots him in the shoulder, only injuring him. He attacks her, throwing her downstairs. After that, the man rushes for the gun and Didak for the sickle. The gun will be stronger than the sickle, so Didak sadly looks at the man. Then he attacks and a shot rings out. Alba doesn't understand what's happening and goes upstairs. The man is dead and Didak, swaying, looks at him, then takes his son in his arms. He manages to say his name, see Alba, and then falls. The bullet hit him right in the chest. Didak dies and Alba buries him at sea. Scenes of their life together flash before and at the end of the film, Alba and her son walk together on the beautiful road leading to their home. This is the end of the movie. That's all for today. Subscribe and like if you want more videos like this.